All right, Jeff, you and I have done many videos together, yes. and I have stood in front of you in front of a 1,000 machine development. It was huge. Yes. So either something, either we got bigger or the machine got smaller, and I'm willing to bet <laughs> we're talking about a smaller model at this point, right? This is a smaller machine. In, in, the, in Taiwan, we call this a UV650, but in the US, we call it an RX65. And this machine basically has uh, the, the top of the line of the product we built, because this machine can come in a, in a, a 12,000 RPM spindle or a 15,000 RPM spindle. And it all, can also come in uh, 40 tools or 60 tools. And you can also add uh, another 120 tools to that, which is a separate unit. And then on top of that, we can add the R, or the MPS system, which is either a 320, 320 millimeter pallet, a 400 millimeter pallet, or a 500 millimeter pallet. So this machine is our RX-65 in the US, and this machine has uh, a 320 millimeter pallet, which has uh, 18 pallets, so nine on the top, nine on the bottom. And this, you can also go up to a 500 millimeter pallet size that'll be available in about six months. Jeff, there's a topic of discussion that I have to have with you, and I want to go back to what you said about the tools. Now, yep. if I do my math correctly, you mentioned 120 to go on top of 60 there, so 180 tools. In a machine shop, I have been that machinist that wanted to have my done-in-one, yep. to have that part finished, a complex part, and I did not have enough tools in my tool changer, so regardless of the capability of my machine bed, I had to take it out or slow down and pop different tools in, reprobe them or probe them ahead of time. Regardless, I was making adjustments to my setup. The ability to have enough tools for redundancy or to have enough tools for a high mix. When you're talking about all the pallets you have over there for a high mix situation, that to me is one of the keys that sometimes overlooked. Yes. You know, having enough tools is critical, and especially when you can have up to 18 pallets. Not only that, I mean, certainly tools is important, but think about the, the chip conveyor system. Our, our chip conveyor system, you know, what, you know what, a, what a customer doesn't want to do if they're running automation is they don't want to have to clean that coolant tank and chip conveyor all the time. And we have a very nice system here that's a, both a scraper type and a hinge type uh, that gives you the ability to run 24 seven without having to have someone clean it out all the time. So so not, not only have we thought about the tools that are needed, we've also thought about the chip conveyor side of it that's needed because that you don't want to waste time and effort on either. Yeah. It's funny because I thought I was bringing up something that's not noticed quite as often, but you won off <laughs> me. You win as always. You are absolutely right. I have been into shops. I myself have worked in shops where my chip conveyor fills up faster than I want it to. I don't have a solution to yeah. the issue or it's not wide enough to collect all chips or it's not high enough to put a bigger bucket in there. Whatever it might be, the chips, the chips are sometimes the unsung hero, aren't they? Yeah. And, and you know, again, we have to listen to our customers. That's one of the things that we do here at YCM is we listen to our customers and then we implement what's needed uh, to make sure that they don't run into problems in their manufacturing process. So we're we're an all ears open company and we want to make sure that our customers are give us, giving us the information we need to develop that or to, to input that into our, into our systems. I'm going to do a really quick summary about what I know about YCM that's going to lead us into automation, but I don't want to leave some aspects out that I want the audience to know just in case they're rhetorical, right? Because I want to yeah. make sure that they're said. I often ask questions that don't need an answer, right? But I want to say it out loud. And it's the rigidity and the base and the quality that goes into the base. It's the precision and the hand scraping that goes into above the base. It's the fact that YCM makes their own spindles and so the micron accuracy is there. Okay, now that I've said all that, let's talk about automation because automation is of the utmost importance these days, especially when we used to be of the mindset, when I heard the word automation, I used to say, I don't need automation, Jeff, because I'm not running 100 parts. I'm not running 1,000 parts. I'm not running 10,000 parts. I don't need automation. I'm okay using my quick change base, removing something, putting something back. It's quick enough for me to rotate it in again. But I usually have some dead times in the evening when I'm not there, in the nights when I'm not there, on the weekends when I'm not there. And although this pallet change system we would put into the world of automation is set up for high mix and low volume, every single one of those can be a different job and you can still run through nights and weekends fully automated. You, you basically said everything that needed to be said, like you said. <laughs> so that my summary yeah, yeah, worked. Yeah, your summary worked. You beat me on the yeah. chip conveyor. but And, and, and listen, I'll say that almost 99.9% .9 of all the customers that I talked to today said, hey, you know, if, if you had a guy that could set this machine up, I would be happy to buy it only because it can run by itself after that. And, and that's basically what this machine can do. And like you said, you can put 
uh, if you've got uh, two different levels of seven and seven, you can basically put 14 different parts on it and let the machine run 14 different parts at a time. Because all you have to do on the other side of it is change out the pallet, put a different pallet on with the next part that needs to be run. So th th this machine allows you to do a done in one scenario, truly so. And just for fun, since I have you and I don't want to let you go just yet, I'm going to be a little bit long-winded. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this last <laughs> bit as well. Uh, is the fact of what you brought up, if I have someone to set it up and allow it to run, right? But what happens these days, and back in when I was a machinist, I'm thinking early 2000s, right? Yeah. We had one person, one machine, and maybe at best we had one person, but they couldn't run all the machines at the same time. My yeah. point is, with a setup like this, I could buy four or five, six of these things in a cell and one person exactly. can run that entire cell. That's true. And, and, and that's where it's nice because, you know, we would create a cell that would potentially have, you know, one window here, one window here, right? Go down the aisle, one window here, one window here. So all the operator had to do was go up and down the aisle and service the machines as he needed to service the machine. So yes, and, and as we move forward in the five axis world, we're seeing more and more cells. So that, that's commonplace today to sell more than one machine with one operator. This is how we compete with what we're calling the skills gap and labor shortage as well as having the ability to do more with the operators we do have, make sure that they're trained. Jeff, as always, amazing. I see the auto door working. I see auto change working. I see everything working exactly like it's supposed to. I'm so grateful to be here in Taiwan to see firsthand how YCM is doing it, how they've been doing it for over 70 years at this point, how the foundry creates it for over 40 years and putting it all together to see it live action and learn from you. everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with Jeff and I. We have more videos. If you've missed the others, if you haven't seen the ones coming, just stay tuned. They're coming. I promise you, Jeff is amazing and worth listening to. We do it better together. <laughs>